Um, so before I tell you more about uh, our partnership with uh, X3, I would just like to tell you a few words about the project that I'm currently leading for Fresine. Uh, so Fresine has been founded 70 years ago by uh, Eugène Fresine, uh, the inventor of pre-stressing. And uh, today we are part of uh, the Vinci Group and uh, we are still the leaders in uh, pre-stressing and uh, specialized civil engineering. Uh, we are a very large uh, scale company since we make uh, 800 uh, million turnover uh, and we have 7,500 employees working in uh, more than 70 countries all around the world. Um, and the specificity of Fresine is that we are both uh, technology manufacturer, so we manufacture high technologies uh, for the construction sector, such as uh, pre-stressing systems, uh, bearings, movement joints, etc. But we are also a construction company um, who, uh, that uses uh, those technologies to uh, build and repair um, civil engineering structures and buildings. Um, We've first been involved in uh, 3D printing uh, when, we, uh, when we've carried out the assembly and the pre-stressing works for uh, the Office of the Future that was uh, 3D printed by uh, our friends from uh, Winston in China. And this is how we came to realize that um, first, uh, 3D printing is a booming sector, as I'm sure you all know very well. And second, uh, that pre-stressing uh, could give 3D printing the, the opportunity to go uh, one scale larger and to reach new applications. Um, so that's why we are currently developing new pre-stressing systems and uh, new construction processes to, um, to put our expertise at the service of uh, in innovative uh, 3D printing projects. Um, so today I'm actually here on behalf of um, Maxime Trocmé, the director of uh, innovation of Vinci Construction. Uh, he apologized for uh, not being able to attend, uh, but on his behalf I will say uh, a few words about uh, the partnership between Vinci and X3. Uh, so Vinci Group is a very large scale company. We are uh, uh, the first international construction company after the, the big Chinese uh, uh, construction companies. We make a uh, 38 billion uh, euro turnover and we have a bit less than 2,000 uh, employees, 200,000 employees uh, worldwide. Uh, so we have very wide range of, um, of skills from concessions to uh, contracting, uh, road construction, uh, etc. But also uh, construction with uh, Vinci Construction that is the largest uh, subsidiary of uh, Vinci. Um, we make 13 billion euro turnover, but less than 70,000 employees, and we have 700 uh, companies, uh, sp specialized companies, uh, working all around the world. Um, we, as a strong uh, um, company, as a, one of the leader in construction, uh, we believe that we have a strong responsibility to push innovation so that uh, we can imagine the the future of construction and we believe that uh, 3D printing will be part of it. Uh, indeed, as our chairman uh, Jérôme Stobler said, um, we believe that 3D printing uh, offers a revolutionary, uh, re revolutionary potential. Um, so that's why we want to, we want to push uh, the expansion of, uh, of 3D printing uh, since we believe that it will open a very wide range of uh, possibilities in the construction and archi architectural sector. Um, yeah, so that's the reason why we've uh, uh, invested in, uh, in the startup uh, X3. Um, they've developed a very impressive print head and have uh, printed uh, uh, amazing prototypes, but I will let uh, Alban present it uh, later. Um, for Vinci, the aims of this partnership is uh, uh, to help uh, X3 to expand. Uh, every startup needs uh, some capital, so investing in them will help them to, to, to grow and to develop uh, new technologies. Um, it's also to boost the collaboration between uh, X3 and the uh, Vinci construction teams uh, to open the mind of our employees uh, on 3D printing. 
uh, and the final aim is to um, to develop together new opportunities and new application uh, to boost the expansion of uh, of 3D printing. Um, so I'll let uh, Alphonse speak, but uh, uh, if you have any question about uh, Fresine, you can approach me directly, but uh, if you have more qu question about the partnership between Vinci Construction uh, and uh, X3, I invite you to contact directly uh, Maxime, who followed the, uh, the partnership from, from the beginning. Thank you. So, can you hear me? It's okay? Okay, so X3, I'm gonna explain a little bit about how we manage to do everything and how we have different offer. So what we do for starting is to access, because the problem with 3D printing, I think everybody knows it. Nobody knows where it go, and nobody is the application, what we are going to do. So what we focus really on is, because we are formation from architects, and in field civil engineer, we work with architect, designer, constructor, and final client also, to understand what's going to be possible to do with 3D printing. Because we think there is a dream about printing houses, but we think for the moment what's really important is to print some parts of the house which are going to be really like interesting to print. So that's what we do. We also do prototype after creating new projects, new objects. And when we know that everybody is in line, like all the ecosystem is ready. What we want to do is to sell the printer, the whole systems, with the mixer, the robots, and the printing head. That's our team. We are really like dynamics. We are from architecture, civil engineering, um, material scientists. Um, so that's all range of different people. And we really focused about seeing a lot of in different industry, what we could take from those industry, like precast industry, robotics industry, and to bring them inside the construction. That's where we think it's really important to go. That's our different partner we have, like Lafarge Olsim, uh, Vinci Construction, ABB for robotics, Inria for robotics. And what we do is we prepare in automated mixing system with, for the moment, BHPU, water and adjuvants, we pump it like liquid one because we want it to make it flow through a long distance into the printer. And inside the printing head, we put some adjuvants to have a really fast setting time so we can print and we can manage to change the setting time directly inside the head. That's really what we focused on because we really want to, to be precise about what we are printing. We don't want just the concrete to flow and to print what's arrived, but we want to change it directly at the end of the head. If at some point you don't want the concrete to be accelerated and you want to let it flow a little bit more liquid, you can change it directly inside the head. So this, this head is really high performance. It's like industrial heads. It's after like three or four generations of heads. So we finally managed to have like a really good technology. I'm gonna go through a lot of different projects. So this is a wall we designed for um, USH. It's like social housing. We managed to imagine a wall really good for insulation with uh, three uh, walls inside with optimized, optimizing the thermic bridge. Uh, we managed to have some beam inside so we, you can put reinforcements on poor BUHPC. Or you can also have some furniture inside. So really the, the main goal is to print elements, augmented elements with a lot of different function. You don't just want a, a wall to be something, but you want your wall to be everything. Because you don't want just to have like the structural, but you also want to have the insulation. You want to have the, the pipe for the electricity, for the plumbing. You want to have really an element with a lot of different things inside. So we work on this. We made in France uh, the first, oh yeah, because everybody say we do the first things, so we do something first also. It's a, a post mm -hmm. in, uh, in France, in Aix-en-Provence. So we, we print the cast and we pour some concrete inside because for the regulation it was easier to, to have a regulation about pouring concrete and not printing concrete because it's quite hard. We also working with designers and on patterns because we think it's also really important 
not just to say, okay, 3D printer make ugly things, but in fact you can do really pretty things. Mm -hmm. You have the problem with the layers, that's where you can go. And we're also focusing a lot about how you can clean the surface and how you can smooth it. But it's a long process because everybody wants something flat and they don't want to see the line, but this make, needs a lot of research. Oh, sorry. So that's what we do. We work with Zahadid to try to have new shapes and elaborate things. We also work with designers to have those kind of textural. So concrete is no more concrete. It's more like textile. And that's really interesting because the technology can manage to change how you use a material. And the last project we have done, it's uh, in Alençon, uh, Maison Concept Iris. So we have done four posts in precast industries and also uh, a resi. So this is quite interesting because for the moment to do this is really, really expensive. You need a mold, really complex mold. And in fact, we print this in two hours and we pour some UHPC concrete, also for regulation. And after we do that, you just had to put it on the construction site. And also a huge project about Suropits, like our friend from Saibi. Um, there is a huge market. I think he explained really well where is the market. This is just 1% of what you can imagine in 3D printing. I think we have to really focus and work hard about the application about 3D printing because the technology is here, but the application, everybody has to work a lot and imagine new way of doing things. I'm just going to show you a little video about 3D printing. So that's the sewer pit we are printing. So it's quite clean. You can see how it flow. So with some images of what we are already done. And so that's the concrete using from Lafarge, which have developed them. You can see also some clay printing, really useful for doing like so special shapes because we also focused on using a lot of different material what, where it needs to be used. So that's the sewer pit putting in place directly inside the, the floor. And you're gonna see also the last project we have done is because we're focusing on fully automatized precast industries and there is some problem. For example, one of the major problem is how you do, you put a window. So you just grab another robot and you pull, put the window inside the 3D printing system. And after, you just continue to print. And because we have a six axis robot, you can manage to do nearly the border of the window. That's quite interesting. So you really, we, we think that 3D printing is not just pouring concrete on, on site or off site, but the thing is you can go really much forward. And I have a yellow card, so, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, <coughs> it's the end. So that's where we want to go, is really to push forward, to have new innovation and not just pouring concrete, but to put the 3D printing really on the top of the needs for construction. And if you want to grab another window, it's okay, it's already there. <laughs> So thank you very much, and don't hesitate if you have some questions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Perfectly on time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, maybe Alice, you can elaborate a little bit about uh, why, uh, how do I say it, Vinci? Vinci? Vinci. Vinci. I want to say it right. <laughs> so hard. Vinci. Why you decided to invest in, in, in this type of technology instead of uh, like we heard before, develop it yourselves. Um, may have to discuss with Maxime as well I for this, know. but um, I guess we we are a construction company, so we are not into uh, into developing high technologies. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, there are a lot of companies that can do it better than us. Uh, so I think. Uh, we, uh, as a construction company, we have a lot of uh, lot to uh, give to the three D printing as a whole. So I think it's better if we concentrate on one what we what know how best. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, meaning uh, construction and um, help other uh, startups to 
to but, move but can into I, can maybe one last thing for you is that can you say something do you think there's any specific type of building or a specific area where you can see this being more relevant than other areas? We already heard about the plumbing and, and the manholes, which mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Now we're more t going towards the more design area. I was in, uh, surprised and, and very and interested to see the whole uh, pattern thing. Is there a, an area where you already now can see this is where it will be applicable in soon? Well, of course, for uh, buildings, it's uh, much easier to I mean, to, to start with the walls, as uh, Apiscor and uh, other companies have done. Uh, there will be a lot of development needed for printing, like slabs and, uh, or even uh, like bridges. This will have a lot of work to, work to do. We'll hear so about that in a bit, actually. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> who printed a, 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 a little bridge. Uh, do I have any questions in the audience for now? Uh, I have one more also uh, uh, for you, Alban. Uh, what, what cha I mean, you are in it right now, every day, <laughs> the challenges, we've all heard about it. What, what is your, what's the biggest challenge in terms of maybe ter taking 3D printing uh, construction from the theoretical to the, actual to the actual end goal? What do you think is the biggest challenge right now? Is to have the market. The what? <laughs> the market needs the to be here. The market. And the market <laughs> is, everybody say, okay, we c everybody can print a house right now, or, house, or part of the house or something. But to be really relevant, you have all the needs, you, we said, like the regulation, and to pass everything, and the economics also. You have to be sure that what you do is cost efficient, it's going to be like bring something new in the construction, because if you want to just copy what's happening right now, you don't need 3D printing. So everybody needs to develop new way of construction, new things to build, and new learning, like new how you can use it. In yeah. mm -hmm. But this is interesting because it's, so it's not a technology. No. It's interesting coming from you who yeah. are presenting the technology. So the technology, the, 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 the product, the, 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 the material, which is, I remember from last time, the material was the biggest problem, the technology was... Big. So basically what you're saying is that is the market now yeah. more than it is the technology? Yeah. I think all the technology are ready right now. When you, when you see everybody printing, we know that all technology can work like eight well, hours Mr. ago. Well, Mr. Mahi can build everything, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can build it all, build it all. Yeah, and <laughs> for the moment, I, I'm pretty sure that everybody knows that's the technology, at least the technology of pouring concrete. But what we focused on is just not pouring concrete, but to have some reinforcements inside the concrete, automatize, to have some slabs, to have some windows. And that's the goal that we, yeah. I think we all have to focus on because the technology to pour concrete, I think it's not so hard. There is a lot of good material scientists which know what they are doing. The technology is here, but we need the market to so be. So the market needs to. Yeah. That will be the last word from you guys. Thank you so much. Give them a big Thank round you. of applause. Alice and Alban. Thank you.